Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to solve logarithmic equations. And not actually solve individual problems because I have example videos on that. I just want to kind of give you some ideas on how to solve different types of logarithmic equations that you will um, encounter. So the first counter is just using inverse operations. And you know, these can be basic, but basically our idea is here's what a log here's like the parent graph of logarithmic equation, where obviously b can be any number. Um, but if and usually we'll have something to y too. But basically what we want to do is isolate using inverse operations. So therefore we have a logarithmic equation. So just a kind of a, a basic example. If I have 10 equals um, you know, log base um, 2 to the, uh, you know, to the x minus, or sorry, let's do uh, plus, yeah, let's do plus 7, right? So if I wanted to solve for this, right? I'm trying to solve for x here. Basically, what I want to do is go ahead and subtract a 7 on both sides. And therefore, I have 3 equals log base 2 of x. So basically, now, when doing this, what I can do is, um, in this example, I just applied my inverse operations. I isolate it. Now, this might be obvious for you, right? And you could say, well, 2. You know, 2 raised to the third power is going to equal to x. So you could just say 2 to the third power equals x, or 8 equals x. And that's the exact same thing as what I did here is actually converting to exponential form. So use inverse operations. And then once you've used inverse operations, you can just kind of like think about it in exponential you know, kind of form. I mean, to me, I just did the work in my head. Um, but you know, sometimes they're not as easy. So actually converting it to exponential form, as I did here, will help you kind of see the answer. Another way is to use, um, oh, to apply the rules as power. So another way what we could do is we could say 3 equals log base 2 of x. And here, using the rules of exponents, what I can do is raise them as both powers. So if I raise them as a base 2, so I have 2 to the third power equals 2 log base 2 of x. And if you remember your rules of logarithms, when we have 2 raised to log base 2 as an exponent of x, then we're just left with 2 to the third power equals x, which we again know is going to be 8. Okay, um, So I kind of had those switch around a little bit. But basically, you know, your first types of problems um, are going to cover these first three. And all you're going to do is use inverse operations, and then either using the rules of exponents or converting it to exponential, and you're going to be able to solve. And it's, and it's not that bad. The, the next two, um, well, at least this next one, is a lot of times where the more difficult logarithmic equations come around. And what we'll have is like you know, log of x you know, plus log of x equals, I don't know, we'll do uh, log base 2 of 2 of you know, 1. Just make something simple. So just remember, when you have you know, more than one logarithm, we have to get it into this format, right? So we can't have multiple, we can't solve with multiple logarithms. We can only have one of those logarithms. So what we want to do in this case here is when we have these multiple logarithms is apply the rules of logarithms. So this would be log times 2x times x equals 1. And then I could say you know, log base 2 of x squared equals you know, 1. And then say 2 to the first power equals x squared. Now what's important about this is when we have multiple x's, in this case, we've got to look for our extraneous powers, right? Because when we take the square root of both sides, um, we have plus or minus the square root of 2, right, as equal to x. But we know that we can't have a negative value. You can't raise 2 to some power and get a negative square root. So therefore, that va this negative square root of 2 would be extraneous. So just remember, whenever you have multiple, um, x, multiple logarithms, to make sure you plug in the values of x back into your equation to make sure that you don't have something that is extraneous, meaning it do it's not true for the equation. So just like we would check our answers when we first learn linear equations, you know, whatever your answer is, plug it back in. You know, for instance, here my answer is 8. Plug 8 back into the equation. 2 raised to what power gives you 8? 3. 3 plus 7 is 10. So just make sure you go back for logarithmic equations. Just plug it back in to make sure you have an extraneous, uh, you don't have any extraneous solutions. Last but not least is the one-to-one -one property. And this actually is going to be probably your easiest. Remember the one-to-one -one property for exponential. If you have b to the x equals b to the y, that means x is equal to y. Well, the same thing is true if you have log base b of x is equal to log base b of y, then still x is equal to y. 
So whenever you have a logarithm on both sides, but now remember, these logarithms have to be log equals log. So if you have to apply operations to get it single down to one logarithm, then do that. But just make sure it's log equals log. No like plus one or minus two or anything like that. Log equals log. But if you have log base two of x is equal to, let's say, log base two of five, well, guess what? x is equal to five. Okay. Now again, remember, this only works, though, if it's log equals log. If I put like a minus one there, then that doesn't work. You can't use that. You'd have to you know, subtract that and use the rules of logarithms, and it can get kind of crazy from there. But um, I'll go through multiple examples you know, in my videos as far as how to apply the you know, operations and do everything for solving. But those are going to be your basic ways to solve logarithmic equations. Thanks.